Hi, this is Vince at Discounting Board Marine. Today we're going to uh, check our damper plate. We've already moved, removed the transmission and now we're going to check the damper plate for wear. Uh, sometimes the springs will wear, start rattling, make a noise. That could be an indication of excessive wear. Sometimes the center hub will be loose. That's a sign that it's time to replace it. Um, and we're just going to check those things and then also show you how to remove the bell housing so that you can get to the damper plate and remove that if necessary and how to put one on. So here we go. Sometimes the damper plate will start to rattle when it's got wear on it. Could be an indication that it's ready to fly apart. Sometimes they will just fly apart. You lose forward and reverse at the same time. That's a good indication you've got a damper plate problem. So we're going to go ahead and pull the damper plate. The first thing you want to do this on a PCM engine, this is the electrical bracket and your positive battery cable comes in. So because we're dealing with electricity and move, removing the brackets, we want to disconnect the battery first. So we'll go ahead and do that. It takes a half inch wrench. You always start with the negative cable and pull that off. I like to pull the positive cable also because we're going to pull it off of the battery. But then we're also going to pull it off of the starter relay which is on the electrical panel. This particular engine is a ProTech engine but this panel will be on a carbureted engine as well as a fuel injected engine. It also uses a half inch wrench. The reason I do this is just to get it out of the way. This is the cable that goes down to the starter and the starter is also going to have to come off. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect that also. This is also the activating wire for the starter. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Uses a half inch wrench that comes off the starter relay. And then there's a bracket that holds all these wires together that holds the bell housing on. When we take this bolt off, a lot of this stuff will come out of the way. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the starter. This is a permanent magnet starter. It's got the two wires that come down to it. One is a spade connector. You just pull the spade off. The other <clears throat> wire goes up to the starter relay and that just uses a 13 millimeter wrench on this particular starter. Once you have the wires removed, there's two bolts that hold the starter to the bell housing actually. So you'll want to remove that. That takes a 9 16 inch wrench and on that situation I like to use a long extension 9 16 inch ratchet. You can get behind the starter, you can actually feel one of the retaining bolts. This will give you just enough room to get to that bolt and you can go ahead, loosen it and then take it out. Okay, this gives a little better angle. You can see we get the bolt loose, it comes out and then you can get your top bolt out and the starter comes right out. One thing you want to be aware of, there are two little bolts on the back side or be the front side of the housing, the bell housing. So you have to get those from behind. They take a half inch wrench. If you don't know they're there, it'll make it difficult to get that bell housing off. So there's one on this side and there's one on the other side. This is the, uh, this is the other bolt. This holds actually what's called the starter locating plate on in place and this one's a lot easier to get to once you get that starter out. Now we're ready to pull the bolts on the front of the bell housing. The bolts on the front of the bell housing take a 5 8 inch wrench uh, or socket so we'll go ahead and pull those. Remember that the two top bolts that hold the bell housing also hold this electrical panel so we're gonna uh, be careful when we pull that and we'll go ahead and pull them. Oh. 
Also, there are two studs, one here and one over on the other side. So when you pull all these bolts out, the plate will not fall down. They'll be held by these locating studs. So you can go ahead and pull everything. We'll get the electrical panel out of the way and then we'll be ready to pull the bell housing. That bell housing has to be pulled straight back uh, because of these pins. Their locating pins makes it easier to get everything lined up. We're going to need a ratchet for that. We use an extension to get the bolts that are under the electrical panel. Makes it a lot easier. This we can just flip up. I like to keep a piece of rope or string handy so we can just tie this off, keep it up and out of the way. Okay, now we're ready to pull the bell housing. And there's our flywheel and our damper plate. You can check these springs. These are all pretty tight, so that tells me that there's not a lot of wear on this plate. Another thing, I like to take something to stick inside the center hub and move it around. You can see there's a bolt missing here. That's why it's flexing a little bit. but. The hub itself is nice and solid, so I'll probably, if I was doing a transmission rebuild uh, or something like that, I would leave this damper plate in and reuse it. Okay, these actually are a 9 16 inch bolt, and the torque on these is not real tight. Uh, you're probably looking at about 18 to 26 foot-pounds, somewhere in there. So we checked our springs, they're all nice and tight. The center hub is nice and tight. We're removing the damper plate. And one thing about these damper plates, this particular plate has three spokes on it. The new style damper plate is completely round. Uh, they changed them up a little bit, different manufacturer, whatever. Both are good, some have enclosed springs. This one has open springs, and uh, you can see there's not a lot of rust or corrosion on this particular damper plate. I've had transmissions actually fuse to the center hubs from rust in saltwater applications. Uh, those get a little trickier to remove, and usually involves drilling holes in the bell housing to get to these damper plates to get the transmission out. So those are just some of the things you got to watch out for. Uh, and then you're ready to just reverse the process, put your new damper plate on, make sure the center hub is dead center, and then just put your bolts back in. And you're back in business. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call at 803 345 9 nine six and I'm extension three my name is Vince and I hope this helped a little bit and thank you very much for your time hope you have a great day